So ESC20 for me is the worst possible uh, um, case of protocol design for tokens. They, uh, they, so sometimes I, I may have a counter objection, which is standardness. Even a very, very, very bad design, if it becomes a de facto standard, is better than the alternatives just because it's a standard. So if everybody is, uh, I, I remember I had another client that uh, was asking me a, uh, like an opinion about what to use in order to issue tokens for tickets in an event. So they had this event and they wanted to, instead of just give tokens like QR code in an email, which we all right, because the event is centralized anyway. So you have to check it with the centralized party. So let's just issue a QR code to individuals, but they really wanted to do tradable tokens for the event for some kind of marketing reason. So they said, do we have to use uh, liquid uh, or uh, just because you are a maximalist? And I said, guys, uh, what kind of people are you inviting to the event? And they say, crypto traders. Uh, okay, these guys likely have a multi-coin shitty wallet. Yes, uh, I mean, use ERC20. Uh, it's just what they, will, what they will receive. Otherwise, you have to ask them to install liquid compatible stuff like Aqua or Green. I mean, why? This is just, uh, this, this is just nonsense to begin with. So it's just a marketing operation. Let's use ERC20. So if everybody uses ERC20 just because everybody else is using ERC20, then we can have a problem where a very bad standard becomes a, a de facto standard. And so even if it's very bad, you still use it, which is what's happening, for example, in my opinion, with the uh, JavaScript server side. So, uh, so uh, um, browsers uh, use JavaScript. So a lot of web developers learn JavaScript. So now you have to do uh, server side stuff and you have a lot of cheap developers uh, already proficient in JavaScript. So you just use Node.js and then you try to fix all the problem with, uh, with Angular and TypeScript and stuff on top because the original design of JavaScript was not at all good for, for server side stuff. But I mean, it's standard, so now you do it. Uh, with Ethereum, I think that may happen maybe in the future, we're not there yet because if you think about that, yes, it is a standard, but this is all, only a standard among shitcoin traders which is a niche that is not overlapping with actual use. There is nobody using ERC20 for anything which is not ERC20 token trading. So it's a self-defeating standard. Uh, if you think about the future where shit coins are not as important, which is a future I think will come, uh, then the standard to trade shit coins is not that important. But maybe, for example, we can see an interesting phenomenon for uh, centralized stuff like Binance Smart Chain, instead of creating their own uh, token standard, they are just importing ERC20. So it's easier to, uh, to just adapt to support that because it's, uh, for example, if Bitfinex or Bitterfield had to manage uh, Binance Smart Chain, it's easier uh, from a technical point of view. You just, it's just the same stuff. You're just taking, all, taking out all the fake decentralization circles of uh, Ethereum miners and nodes and you're just replacing with proof of authority with Binance, which makes sense, except that it would be more honest to admit it's completely centralized. But at least is, I mean, if you have to centralize, paradoxically, it's usually better to completely centralize because the, the weakness of your protocol from the censorship point of view is the, is the weakness of the weakest link of, of, your, of your setup. So if your weakest link is going to make your protocol completely easy to censor, maybe it's better to just go full centralized and at least increase efficiency and increase UX or, or other stuff. Uh, so it, it's really difficult to, to be partially centralized. When you have a central point of failure, which is really a central point of failure, you are completely centralized. So you may just as well ditch mining circles and stuff like that and just uh, do uh, MySQL, uh, a public reviewable, publicly audi uh, auditable, auditable MySQL, which is basically was uh, what these uh, chains are. So to get back to your question, um, I think ERC20 may have some chance in the future to become a bad standard. I hope to avoid that. Part of the reason for RGB is to try to avoid this dystopic this future, uh, but so far, that's not really the case for most, uh, for most use cases. And the design of ERC20 is uh, everything goes on chain and everything is based on 
miners validating global consensus. Are you familiar with BISC's colored coin implementation for their BSQ token? Um, I wanted to know your thoughts on on the BSQ color coin. I am actually. Uh, I said to, I said before that my presentation in Lisbon. I I mentioned three uh, possible use cases. One was tether like stuff. One was uh, NFT like stuff, and one was BSQ DAO token. So it's. I think that the other reason you may have for decentralized protocol for tokens is to representing this kind of governance token or stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure. That you re that that a transferable token is not an overkill because probably you can have I mean double spending is not really a problem in a uh, um, in a governance rights distribution is there is not really the case where you uh, where you send your governance right to somebody else but also to somebody else because it's it's not trivial to trade high frequency governance rights. Usually there is very slow thing. So a public key, uh, a PGP like structure may probably be used for a DAO without tradable tokens. It's probably an overkill to trade your reputation, trade your, your governance right, trade your auto. Uh, I, I don't know if, if you get what I mean. That said, uh, they decided to go with tokens and the, that's also a legit use case because basically what's the problem? The problem is that there is some degree of centralization, the size, uh, the, the decision making process in uh, in BSQ. If you just uh, have the developers making the, this decision, that's a central point of failure from the point of view of legal persecution of those developers. So the state can just come after them because they, they, they cannot say like a BitTorrent designer, uh, I just designed this software. They, they are actually actively uh, improving it and actively managing escrow stuff. So they actually uh, intervening in the protocol. So if you switch the governance right from known developers to uh, this kind of decentralized governance system, that is better. Uh, I proposed to Manfred back then to wait for RGB uh, to launch the token, uh, but RGB was too slow to come out. And so they went with this correct coin uh, project. Uh, I, I mean, I will not push them to switch right now because the point is that the trading, the exchange part of these coins is not the important part. Uh, the important part is the burning dynamics, is the, is the decision making. It, they're, they're, let's say you have a iceberg of problems with this kind of DAO design and uh, how to transfer the, the token is the small tip of the iceberg, which is not really essential. So they can just use whatever they are using now. If RGB becomes uh, a standard, I don't know, in 10 years, a de facto standards that everybody uses, it will be trivial for DAOs like BSQ to move to RGB. If not, I mean, it's okay. It, 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 it's not really fundamental. I guess that a rare Pepe collectible would have more benefits switching from counterparty to RGB uh, or to AS20 to RGB than a BSQ uh, DAO token will have. So it's, uh, it's another use case I'm very interested in, but the, not, the challenges are, are way more, way deeper than the token transfer problem. Something I, um, well, I, I've got a lot more I want to ask, but I, I'm aware that time is uh, running slowly to, uh, well, quickly to, to the end. So I, something I wanted to ask you, that kind of pulls away a little bit from the technical side of things and more towards the kind of moral or opinion side of things, just to something a bit different. Um, was something uh, that I saw uh, on Twitter the other day uh, was Max Hillebrand talking about um, the Bitcoin law. And this is to do with El Salvador and what's going on there. Essentially, he was saying that, that, that it was bad for the El Salvador merchants and entrepreneurs and kind of went on to explain that the way he saw it was that uh, if someone's a merchant and they want to receive US dollars, um, then and they kind of clearly want dollars over Bitcoin, they don't understand Bitcoin, they don't see the benefit, whatever it is, um, to force him to then give away his goods to receive Bitcoin instead of dollars is obviously uh, well, not a good thing, essentially. And, and he said it was a decrease in the um, in his subjective value scale, I think was the way he put it. So I don't know. Um, 
I don't know if you, if you had like a, an opinion on this because it seemed like Max kind of got ratioed on, on that really. There was more more comments than likes. Uh, so I didn't know if you had a, what your opinion was on that because I thought it was a little bit of a sort of different topic really to, to see what you thought. Uh, like with John, I really appreciate, uh, it's another case where I don't, I mean, I usually have very strong opinion and I express them in a very strong way. And you picked two questions where I actually am more nuanced because uh, so one, as a general principle, I agree that top-down uh, central planning decision are not the way to go for Bitcoin adoption. So it's not about one government deciding, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so as a principle, every move that is coming bottom up from, from people, forcing the government, notwithstanding the government, will be more anti-fragile, more, more, uh, more resilient and more, uh, well, resilient and even anti-fragile and more... Uh, uh, reliable and more uh, long-term oriented uh, than any decision which is central, centrally planned. So centrally, central plan is bad for money, including legal tender for Bitcoin. That said, uh, that's as a general principle. That said, then I said, okay, in this case though, we are talking about the small economy of people that are suffering for uh, US inflation without getting uh, the, the Fed uh, hands out. So. Uh, they, are, they are losing purchasing power because the Fed is printing, but the, at least the Americans are receiving a small amount of this uh, printed money, and they are not. So they're just suffering exported inflation. Plus, they also, uh, their economy is heavily rely, relying on, um, on remittances, and they are suffering a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, free, uh, uh, rent seeking from uh, money transmitters, and there is not a trivial. Uh, and, and, and getting out of this circle is difficult because, okay, just use Bitcoin, but then your uh, Salvadorian uncle will not know how to sell Bitcoin locally. So there is a friction there. And now with this law, they can just go to the grocery shop and they will accept Bitcoin. So my, my, my idea would be central plan, bad. This specific central plan over a limited population with uh, this kind of specific problem may be not the worst kind of central planning I've seen so far. Plus, it's very funny. I mean, I can see, I can say that something is bad, but also fun, like, uh, you know, volcanoes mining. These are very good memes. So, uh, no, no, so let's say, practically speaking, I don't see many people getting hurt for uh, this choice of, uh, of policy. I don't see really the exchange, the, the, the merchant being uh, uh, thrown in jail in El Salvador because of this. And I will tell you a little bit more about specifics of the law. So there is not actual harm I can imagine on a concrete human being. It's just the principle. And on the other hand, the central planning was somehow not that bad in this case, especially com compared with other central planning. I don't want to enter this, this, uh, this kind of worms, but, um, but the, the same country had this draconian COVID restriction, which I think hurt merchants way, way more than any kind of legal tender law. Okay.